it's Brad at Select Roses again. I wanted to do another video about growing roses in containers. It was one of the most popular videos that we had. People ask us questions about it all the time. Uh, the first thing they want to know is what kind of rose, how do we do it, how do we winter them, so we're going to cover everything. The other thing I wanted to do is talk a bit about pruning because we have a lot of people that ask us when our rose is all leafed out like this, can we still prune it? Yes, you absolutely can. You can see on this rose, it actually has last year's rose hips that we've left, so we didn't touch it at all in the fall. It's even going to be making an early flower bud. It's been in the cold frame. This is a shrub variety, and the shrubs can be fantastic container plants. We have a great photo that we'll show you later. The other thing I wanted to talk about was the type of pot. This is just, of course, a plain black, unattractive utility pot. So what we purposely do is grow them in a utility pot, then this pot is placed within a nice decorative pot. So we can easily transport the pots around and move, move them to a sheltered spot for the winter. Or if you want to, you can also take your decorative nice pot in, in the house somewhere so it's not going to age outside. First thing we need to do though is go through the basics of pruning. So this is a shrub rose, which means it makes a lot of stems on it. Some of them more twiggier than others and it's okay to leave some of the twigs, but it does have a lot of dead wood in it. So I will start by pruning out some of this dead wood and we trim always when we're doing dead wood, we trim it right out down to the base of the plant. We cut that right there. We cut a little bit more there. And um, I spend a lot of time in the center of the bush taking out little twigs like this that aren't going to get enough light to bloom. There's a big piece of dead wood in there. We're gonna cut that piece of dead wood out. And what I'll do now is spend the next few minutes working on this rose. We're going to trim it back by about 50%. Not gonna worry about uh, inward, outward facing buds, anything like that. It's a shrub, they're so easy to grow. Doesn't matter where you cut it. We're gonna haircut this thing off. We're gonna clean it up. And in the next video shot, we will show you a little bit about top dressing the container and getting the best out of this rose. It has been in here for three years now and all we need to do is freshen it up and it's going to take off again and look beautiful. So we're back to the shrub rose that we pruned in a container. You can see I've taken it down by about 50%. There's just a couple old pieces of wood here that I'm going to snip out from the middle of the plant. There's pl still plenty of wood that's left on this bush here. And uh, I'm just going to pull that out from there. Now, the other important thing, if you're growing a rose in a container, they will, even a container this size, this is a good size pot, they're going to become root bound. So what I do every single year is you take your little scratcher, you come in here, and you can rough up even the top feeder roots on the plant, scrape up some of this old soil like that. We're gonna take this old soil out of here, put it down into our handy little bucket there like that. There's going to, we see some nice healthy roots right at the root, the surface there. You'll also notice, by the way, that this plant is growing a bit on an angle, and it's just the placement that we had it at. Most of the blooms were tumbling over the front, and we wanted it like that, but for the purpose of the video, it's actually kind of handy that we can uh, scrape off all of this old soil like that. The other thing we want to do, two things to add. This product we love is, is called Humic. It is 100% organic, it's locally made, and just think of it as adding a bit of concentrated compost. So when you open it up, it looks like sort of like coal dust. And I throw in about, well, that much, about a handful. I don't even measure this stuff. Maybe we'll give it a little bit more because it's a big one. We sprinkle that in a container once or twice a year is all you need to do to add the humic in there. Then, Everybody says, what is the best brand of rose food to buy? You want to get select rose food if you can. That's our brand. But you know what? Go to your favorite garden center, support them, buy a good quality rose food. Ideally, you want to buy one of those slow release Osmocote hanging basket type foods. We find that they work great, but we also find that sometimes just a little heavier jolt and a small amount of our fertilizer is great. We use this on all our containers. We've never burnt anything, but we're talking a very light little handful, a little sprinkle like that into a very large pot. If you had a small little 12 inch pot and you overfed it, you could easily burn the roots. So you definitely don't want to do that. 
Now, the other ideal thing you need to do, and this is what makes the biggest difference, is to top dress with some fresh soil. Some people buy the miracle Grow potting soil, some people like sea soil. You make your own compost. All of that is just wonderful. So we have a bit of our soil blend in here, and I'm gonna dump a bit of this in the top of the pot there. And I put a lot of that in there. And one of the best ways to the spread is just give it a shake like that. That'll spread all around in there. We'll add another couple handfuls here. There we go. And when you position your container rose, remember this rose is going to fill out, even though it looks lopsided now. But if most of your viewing is going to be done from the front, you can have your container this way. If you're going to be viewing from all sides, it's important to make sure you might want to lift the rose up and center it back in the pot. Where we were viewing this rose, it was mostly from the one side. The sun was reaching around the one side and that's why the rose is leaning over a bit like that. This was a variety bred in Germany and it is called Milano Coolerscape. There's a whole group of these Coolerscape roses that are really resistant to disease. Cardinal is an excellent red one. I love Milano for the deep red color. There's a pink one that's called Flamingo, but there's a lot of other shrub roses that you can put in containers that do outstanding for a number of years. Uh, you can put hybrid teas in containers if you have a good sized pot and Floribundas are excellent too. You get a good quality bloom on a Floribunda. Some of them will be fragrant as well. And make sure you put it in an area that's getting at least five, six hours of sun. The other thing they don't like is reflected heat. So if you have a black pot on a black deck, it's going to get very, very hot. That's where having this utility, this container, the utility one placed in another container makes a big difference. It insulates them a little bit. Thanks a lot for listening and we hope to see you out one day soon.